I wrote one time, it's insanity how the enemy can put anything before us and we can take it and make a God out of it. But we can't take the things that God put before us and make him proud. This is what I say love is. This is, this is relationships. I tell people there's a difference between relationship and relations and sex and intimacy. And what God wants is a relationship with each and every one of us outside of wherever you go and congregate. I say love is two hearts that beat as one with dedication and sacrifice to compromise its own selfish nature to benefit each other unconditionally. That's what an uncon unconditional is what he said. There's no greater love than a love that will sacrifice itself for another. That's why he said, I died for you while yet you were still sinners. That's why he gives every one of us a chance and opportunity every day of our life, every second. He said, choose this day whom you will serve for the day of the day of salvation. Because every day of your, every day of your life, you never know when it's going to end. I mean, we're, we're all living in the last days and the end of time. But each and every day, every second of your life, could be the end of your life or the end of your time. So that's why you constantly want to be in relationship and in communication with God. Because guess what? He don't leave. He's always there. Like I said, even in the bad times and the good times. But most people don't even really want to call on him and recognize him until the bad times. And guess what? Those bad times are to get you to the good times. But see, you know what? He says through much persecution that comes true repentance. And most people on repentance. That's why it don't work. I tell people, you can't try God. It's a relationship, man. You've got to be with Him all the time, every time from the moment you wake up and you can see that you're alive to the last time you can see yourself and you go to sleep at night. I'm going to tell you a story, man. <laughs> what time I was in this place, I'll just show you something, something how, how God deals with me sometimes. I was in this place called a playground, man. And what I was learning is that dancing is like it's like we're all spirits. Everybody, everybody, and everything has spirits attached to them. And I was in this place dancing, man. That's what I do. I love to dance. It's spiritual warfare for me, man. I was dancing, man. There was a, three little girls sitting on the couch. I promise you, they must have been about 50 feet away from me. Loud music going on. I'm just sitting there dancing. And man, one of the little girls reached over to the other two and said, oh, I want some of what he got. He like having a good time. Now, mind you, I ain't no way I should have heard this, but that's to show you how we're all spirit. So I walked over to the little girl, and I reached down to her, and I said, great is he that's in me than he that's in the world. I turned around, walked back off. About two songs later, I took two steps toward that little girl, and I promise you, that little girl started screaming and hollering to the top of her lung. That little girl said, get away from me. Don't come over here. Don't even talk to me. There ain't no way I should have heard that with all this loud music going on. But everybody started looking around. I promise you, man, I was just, I was just amazed. And it kind of like shocked me for a minute. I promise you, I stood there for like 10, 15 seconds. And all of a sudden, God spoke to me. And he said, when you went over there, you spoke my word to that little girl. He said that demon spirit inside of her recognized the spirit inside of you. And when you went back, walked back toward her, that demon spirit didn't want no part of the spirit inside of you. That's why the demon spirit said, get away from me. Don't come over here. Don't even talk to me. And I'm going to tell you how. I mean, I stood there for like about three or four minutes, and I just kept saying, wow. I tell people, man, when God talk to you, don't nobody sound like him. I remember another time, man, I was coming out of this club, and I saw these three ladies, man, and I stopped at them, and I, and I you know, I, I, I'm just, sometimes you just follow the Holy Spirit, man. The Spirit just leads you to do things, and it just, won't even, it just blow you away. So I just walked over to them, and I asked them how they doing. They're doing nice looking ladies, you know what I'm saying? Y'all seem like y'all have a good time, whatever. So I just asked them, I said, I know, all, each, I know each one of y'all love God, right? They said, yeah. I said, well, let me ask you a question. I said, when was the last time God spoke to you, and what did he say? Oh, my God. You would have thought I asked them women something, <laughs> something crazy out of this world, man. But they looked at me, and they got mad at me, and I was really serious because 
I just wanted to know when God, because God wants to talk to us. He, he wants to talk to us. He talks to me all the time. <laughs> but man, them girls got mad at me, bro. <laughs> and man, they got mad at me, but that's cool, because you know what? Like I said, he talks to me. Man, I'm driving in my car one day, right? <laughs> And I don't know where I'm in the car by myself, but I'm just chilling. And God just comes out of nowhere and said, "Y'all got a bad habit of touching on each other." And I'm like, "Huh? Y'all got a bad habit of touching on each other?" I'm sitting there like, "What do you mean, Lord?" He said, "Don't you know every time you touch something or somebody, you transfer two things: germs and spirits." And I'm sitting there like, "Huh?" He said, "Think about it. Y'all kiss." Y'all hug, y'all shake hands, y'all exchange money, y'all touching doorknobs and all these different objects. He said that everything has germs and spirits attached to them. I'm simply like, wow. And he said, you can't even imagine some of the germs and spirits people are walking around, uh, walking around with them on them, and they can't wait to just hug you or touch you or just shake your hand, just so they can, uh, so they, they can put some of them spirits and germs off on you. And he said, even though they, and especially if you so-called Christian, <laughs> he said, because they hoping that when they say they, they know they're going to get, they, they're going to give them to you. And he said, they know they're about to see you again. And they hope that by the time that they see you again and run back into you and you get them transferred back to them, that they don't be as bad as they was when, you, when they gave them to you. And I sit there and I was like, wow. <laughs> And that was all he said, man. And I'm telling y'all, I'm going to tell y'all something, brother. When God talked to you, brother, tell you something. Don't nobody sound like him, but it's always going to be something that's good for you. And well, this is one of the things, that, this is one of my like, experiences with the Lord, man. Another one of my experiences, man, I remember, this is when I was an early, when I was a young Christian, man. I remember um, one of my aunts was dying, she had cancer. And I remember my mama calling me to come over to the house, and I didn't really want to go. But something told me to get up and go. It must have been the spirit of the time I knew it. So I get up and I go to the house, and in my mom's house, in my room, that's where my aunt was staying. And I, she, I guess she must have knew that somehow I did, did got around and found out I was a Christian, born again, and all this kind of stuff. And she called me to come in the room. And when I went in there, I just felt this eerie feeling. I know now that it was the spirit of death. And I just remember my, my aunt with this look on her face like she was dying, man. And she reached her hand up to me and just said, pray for me. And I prayed with my aunt. And I know my aunt is in hell, ain't Betty Jane. I know you're in heaven now. And I prayed into heaven, and I promise you, brother, it wasn't even probably a week later, my aunt died, man. That was just one of my early experiences with the Lord, and I'll, this one I'll never forget. <laughs> well, he said, be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, unless you deceive yourself. <laughs> Y'all can't even imagine some of the things I've gone through with God, man. Sometimes he said, God wants you to be, he said, oh, he said, you got to obey. You got to be diligent and obey. One time I was driving, I was going to pick up my cousin. And I was running a little late. And mind you, I done been over there a million times. You know, I probably could have drove my eyes closed. And for some reason, that particular day, I missed my exit. Somebody called me, I missed my exit. And I ended up driving around. And I turned down the wrong street. <laughs> 